Hey everyone! So today I'm excited to announce a new project that I and a member of my Discord, PMP, have worked on. It's a new configuration of RetroArch that we're calling ShmupArch. And what it is, is it's basically the newest uh, RetroArch build and we went in and added a bunch of configuration files specifically for popular shmups as well as went in and changed the general settings to try and get it to where we're basically trying to create the setup of the lowest input lag possible. Now what's exciting is that this build allows you to get down to one frame of input lag in many of the shmups, well all the shmups that the build supports. The cool thing is that even though shmup mame is really awesome, it cannot get down that low as far as input lag. The lowest shmup arch can go, uh, shmup mame can go, is two frames, and that's the best it can do. And with games like Battle Gareka, the Psycho games, it's up there with three to four frames. So this build gets all those games down to one frame, whether it be Battle Gareka, the Psycho games, uh, you know, Batrider, all of them are down to one frame. What's also nice is that the games that are supported also have full save state support. So you're not battling with save states. So what I'm going to do is as I explain this more, I'm going to begin by extracting the zip folder we just downloaded. So I'm extracting it. And while I'm extracting it, I'll kind of talk about some of the limitations of this build because even though it's an awesome new tool or whatever you'd call it, awesome new toy to play with, it does have some limitations. The first limitation is that with some games, the emulation is not quite where you want it to be as far as accuracy. I think the big standout is with Battle Grega. Now the great thing is that Battle Grega now has full save state support. It has one frame of input lag. It feels amazing. The weird drawback is, is that there's an audio issue. Audio issue where the game's music is playing at half speed. And for people like me who don't get too caught up on things like that, you know, I don't really mind that much. But, you know, if you're a purist, I could see that bothering you. So that's a heads up. That's not with every game. Like the cave games emulate beautifully. And I think really the cave games that are supported, these earlier cave games, just play them on this build from now on because they are amazing. So let's get started. Now that we've got it extracted, we'll put this here, move this out of the way. Open Shmup Arch. And I'll show you what these two files are here. So the new config template, this is just a file that if you want to create a new configuration for a game that's not supported, like that we haven't built config files for yet, this is the template you can use to do it. This is how we were using it. Um, and then right here, this is a readme, just kind of going over, you know, people who download this, what's going on. And I think a standout thing is it talks about, again, the issues with Greg and Batrider. Batrider's audio slowdown is not that noticeable. It's really not that bad. But Greg is the one that you're going to think you're, I don't know, listening to trap music or something. Sometimes it sounds cool, sometimes it sounds weird. So, anyway, so we're going to go to RetroArch, scroll, scroll, scroll. Open it up. First thing we'll do is we'll plug in our controller or arcade stick. I'm using an arcade stick. And we're going to begin. I'm going to be by do something. Don't copy me here. I am disabling audio. Because this is the third time I've recorded this video because RetroArch keeps pumping audio into my recording and you can't hear what the hell I'm saying. So don't do that. So just repent, pretend we open this up for the first time. What we're going to do first is we're going to navigate with our keyboard, go to scan directory, and this is where we're going to locate our ROM folder. For me, it's sitting on my desktop, so we're going to go navigating, C, users, MSX, your username will be different, desktop, ROMs. The ROM folder of all the PCB ROMs that I've ripped, right, that I have sitting in my living room. And we're going to scan directory, enter, and you should start to see 
text. And as that's scanning, backspace, backspace, backspace. Do not hit escape. Do not hit escape ever because that will just shut down retrocharge and not save anything you did. So don't hit escape backspace. So we're going to go over here. We were here before and we're going to go down to input and we're going to configure our arcade stick or whatever you're using controller arcade stick keyboard. You don't really have to do much because it's already configured. So begin with hotkey binds. Now there's tons of hotkeys to choose from, but the ones for if you're just playing load state, I give a button on my arcade stick for load state. I don't do one for save state because you can use the menu for that. And in RetroArch, it kind of makes more sense to use the menu. I, I'll explain why later. Menu toggle, definitely important. Give yourself a menu toggle button. Backspace. Okay, user 1 binds, user 2 would be if you had someone else playing with you, so user 1. See right here where it says device index, see that's listing my arcade stick right there. If it's disabled like that, it won't read your arcade stick, so make sure, that's an easy way to tell if it's picking up your arcade stick or your controller, if it's listed. And if it's not listed, sometimes just hit the arrow keys on your keyboard and it'll find it. So. Now we go to bind all, and this is going to quickly prompt you to bind your button, so gather yourself here. And one thing to warn you is that, you know, with this retro arch, you know, it's not really super user friendly sometimes as far as what buttons do what and what games. So there's going to be some trial and error as you have, probably have to go back and switch around what buttons do things. So I'll just do how I do things. So for me, B is Y, Y is a select start up down left right a is b x is x l r and then escape keys for these okay now they've got that all bound let's either hit the b button or backspace either one's fine and we're going to go and look, there's a new present waiting for here, your new menu. This is where all your ROMs were placed after it scanned the directory. So we're going to begin by opening up good old DOJ, run. And you'll notice here that I have already included the core, so you don't have to download the core or anything right there. That's the core you want to use. You also notice that the main core is not included. That's because the MAME core is not good. The MAME core does not support save states, so it does not support the run head feature. And it has an extra frame of input lag over the re what would you call it? The official, the normal release of MAME. So there is no reason to use MAME RetroArch core. There's no advantages to doing that. It's a kind of piece of garbage right now, so ignore that. We're going to run it on good old FBA. Now, in this special build, you should notice when you look at the frame counter, the frame counter for most shmups, some of the Psycho shmups and Rising shmups actually are 60 frames, or the people who made MAME don't know what the correct frame rate is, but for these cave shmups, you should notice you do not want 60 frames. You want the correct frame rate, and we've already set that all up. You don't have to do anything. You'll just notice that's working, and if you just downloaded RetroArch and did this without doing our build, it would be 60 frames, it wouldn't be the correct frame rate. So select, uh oh, we're getting audio, hold on a moment here, there we go. So select is your credit button, start, and go ahead and pick your ship. This is just to demonstrate what you should do as far as configuring certain things when you get into the game. So you notice when you start to play, yes, your fireworks. Your bomb works. Rapid does not seem to work. That is because rapid shot needs to be enabled within the PCB settings. So I'll show you how to do that. So you hold start, go to game. Yeah, holding start by the way opens up the PCB menu. Rapid shot. All cave games you basically need to do this. Exit. Exit. 
and it will be from now on you don't have to do that every time you play it's the first time you play so that is saved so now we should have rapid and there it is excellent so the next thing I want you to take a look at is opening up menu backspace we're gonna go to input and I'm gonna show you how to set up turbo now in in cave games you don't really need to use turbo but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway for games that you do need it in so we're gonna to go to hotkey no not hotkey user one binds scroll down turbo enable and then assign it to a button you don't use so for me that's a okay it is assigned to a now a button I do not use. I'll go back into game and I'll explain how this works. So I'm not actually going to be playing if you're wondering why I'm dying and stuff. So how this works is you press the turbo button and then press the button that you want turboed. So for instance I want my regular shot turboed. Hold the turbo button, press the regular shot button and you'll notice you're turboing. Release the turbo button but still hold the shot button. Right now I am just holding shot and it is still enabled, the turbo is enabled. But when you release shot and then hit it again, turbo has been disabled. So the way turbo works in RetroArch is that you activate it with a button, then you press the button that you want to be turboed while you're holding it, and then release it and then that button will be turbo. And then when you release the button, the turbo will be nullified. The reason why they do this, I think, is because RetroArch doesn't support input inputting two different buttons for the same input, so this is their kind of way around that. And it does come in handy for stuff like Blazing Star and like older school shmups. It doesn't really come in handy for cave shmups at all because the rapid shot is a much better option. So there's that. So now we will exit the game. Back. Back. And one thing I want to show you, but you don't need to do anything for, is this latency option here. This is where a lot of our configuration goes. And I just want to explain how this works a little bit. So with the cave games, we found that two frames of run ahead is ideal. And to explain, this is a little bit CPU intensive the, using this run ahead feature. So if you have an older computer and you're noticing as you're playing that the frame rate is diving below what it should be, you're just going to have to need to use shmup MAME instead because this is kind of a computer intensive, especially when you use more run ahead with certain games like Battle Gorega. So for the cave games, two frames of run ahead. And if you're playing a cave game and you want to check to make sure the run ahead is set correctly, just open your menu, under settings, go to latency, check to make sure it's two. So there you go. So now we're going to play the game we've been talking about. Battle Grega, where are you? Here we go. Oh, yeah. So the way you change it is okay, you hit menu, backspace, over here. I want to show you this. Go to configuration, save current configuration, hit enter. That's going to save your button input configuration, everything that you've done so far. So it's good to do that. So we're going to hit backspace again. Then you go to the quick menu here, close content. Sometimes RetroArch will crash. Yeah, that's very common. That's why I wanted you to save before you close content. Because RetroArch will often crash for some reason. So, now we're going to go to Battle Gorega. Funnily enough, since I have audio disabled, you're not going to hear the slowed down audio, but it's not that big of a deal. You'll hear it when you use it. So, let's input our button here and the nice thing is is with Battle Grego what I do is I set up a save state 
immediately past the screen so every time you launch it you don't have to sit and watch the screen so I'll show you the after the RAM gets loaded and everything which takes its sweet time come on now color RAM background okay here we go so I'm gonna input coins with select there we are the main menu so hit start and the reason why I don't assign a save state button is because there's no easy way to navigate save state slots. It's not like in shmup main where you can assign it to a key. So I hit save state slot zero, enter. The save state has been done to prove it. Load. Yep, works perfectly. So let's just select the ship real quick. And I want to show you now Battle Garega is down to one frame, but as many of you will know, Battle Garega is a more laggy game than a lot of the cave games. So in order to get that one frame, I'm gonna hit backspace. We're gonna go to latency. I'm gonna show you. See it has been configured to four frames of run ahead. So a quick guide is that the Psycho games and the rising games need four frames of run ahead to get that one frame of input lag and the cave games don't they only need two so make sure they're at two psycho rising at four and then you know other shmups like the neo geo ones and stuff like that four frames as well so that's just to show you when you play battle grega or a game go ahead and check the latency make sure it's correct and that pretty much does it for the video that's kind of showing you how to set up the basic features how they work um, I guess I'll go over some features that don't work so recording does not work if you want to record with this you should use OBS to be honest because input recording is not supported currently um, is there any other issues that I can think of not this time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me either in the YouTube comments, on the Discord, on the forum, on Twitter, however you want to. So when you're all done, again, just save your configuration. You don't have to do this every time, but just to be safe. And then quit RedGeorge. And there you go. That's how you set this up. Thanks for taking the time to watch.